So I wonder if this door is frozen. Oh, look. Oh, not as much snow as I expected. We had a freezing cold storm that blew in a lot of crystallized snow. And as you can see, it drifted up around the dome here a little bit. And I fully expected it to flow in through the cracks around the edges and pile up inside here. But I just have a little drift in the middle where it came down through the vent in the top. So let's look inside and see what's going on. So this is the amount of snow that came in in the center of the dome that came through the vent. All we have here in the middle. And this is all the snow we got blowing around through the edges through these cracks in the opening of the door. I thought it would be frozen solid, but like you can see it's not and easily cleaned up. I guess there's some down here too. Just put that out. It's all cleaned up. You can see it's all very crystally and not very snowflake-like. But It's working, it's working. So this is my latest experiment, a uh, dome built with trapezoids. And I'm very proud of it. It's doing really well. I am going to talk to you more about this in this video and more. There's a lot to explain about how I built this. I'm sure you're gonna find it very exciting. Here are some of the construction details. Three quarter inch medium density overlay plywood was used for the trapezoid panels. It took about nine sheets of four by eight material. The key to building this dome is that the seams are bull nose and cove construction. This allows a more mechanical joint and alignment, creating a greater surface area for the adhesive. Also, as the vertical joint angles change, the cove joint rotates without changing the basic milling setup. It has 12 sides and a diameter of nine and a half feet. The pressure treated two by four foundation has biscuits in the miter joints. Instead of cutting a doorway into the dome, I left panels out of the assembly. I chose a smaller than standard door, but a standard entry door could be designed into the structure. The panels are adhered with polyurethane sealant, which off gassed for over a year. I recommend using a low VOC sealant or construction adhesive. I used expensive chunks of Simpson strong tie straps and stainless steel screws to hold the joints while the sealant cured. Next time, I will use a one inch wide crown staple with five eighths legs and not remove them. The shell is primed and painted. The seams are now sealed on the face with through the roof, a copolymer rubber elastomeric sealant. The entry is milled from a dunnage piece of CDX plywood and the door is a simple frame with dual walled polycarbonate on 32 inch drawer glides. The floor is one and a half inch rigid insulation and will soon be covered with a three quarter inch subfloor. Once a few essential variables have been determined, a dome can be made from most materials or thicknesses and it can be child's play to construct to transform your world. The math required is easily calculated. It is simple as a game of Sudoku calculating one angle at a time and charting it into place. This dome has 144 trapezoid panels, but only 12 different sizes. This experimental structure should be considered a prototype best suited for huts. I chose this dimension because it fits in the space. I preferred a 12 foot diameter. If you like this video and you want to know more, Hit like and subscribe. I have much more information about what I think is a fantastic shell design and construction process.